what we've done in our study is look at uh, a large sample of uh, normal sleep recordings. And um, the, the reason for doing this is that the normal values for uh, polysomnography are quite limited. They're based on a few hundred subjects in most samples. Uh, so what our idea was, was to collect all of the published uh, sleep literature uh, that reported a control population. And so uh, whatever study of medication or sleep intervention, uh, they, they, they were looking for an effect. We were more interested in the control population and we took the controls from all of these studies uh, from 2007 onwards when uh, some, some standardization of the criteria for scoring occurred. So we took all of these samples and it, it, it allowed us to, to, to generate uh, truly normative data on over 5,000 participants worldwide and we could look at various uh, qualities of uh, sleep that changed over life and we could also stratify it by sex so we could find uh, normal values for any particular individual so we we think this will be broadly applicable to those who practice sleep medicine and uh, we encourage people to uh, to access the data uh, which is now available it's published in Lancet respiratory medicine and it's available online now and and uh, so you can access the paper and uh, find control values that, that should be applicable to every sleep lab uh, worldwide. Um, one of the, the, uh, the interesting things that we were able to do once we had all this normative data it look, was to look at changes over time. Uh, so some important sleep parameters like sleep efficiency, how, how much uh, of time in bed is spent sleeping, uh, starts out at about 89% in young adults and then it, it drops off uh, by about 2% for every decade uh, of age. Uh, it takes about one minute longer for every decade of age uh, to fall asleep. So the sleep onset latency uh, becomes prolonged. Uh, we found that periodic limb movements increase uh, by about one limb movement an hour for every decade of age. Uh, we found surprisingly that there was very little effect on uh, the percentage of time asleep spent in slow wave, in N3 sleep, or in REM sleep. That remained remarkably constant across the lifespan. Uh, REM sleep, for example, was about 20% uh, of the sleep time uh, across all ages, which was quite remarkable. Uh, we found some gender differences as well. Uh, uh, basically, um, men had uh, slightly more uh, sleep disordered breathing um, and uh, also had more arousals uh, over uh, uh, over population comparisons so so we think uh, the real value of this study is to provide normative values for for others and we we hope people will use this data it, it should help them one advantage of uh, this normative data is that uh, researchers can now plan uh, appropriate uh, sample size uh, calculations. So we have uh, a better sense of what normal is in our population and what the ranges are. So it will help studies be designed uh, more efficiently. Uh, we'll be able to get the right, right number of patients enrolled and uh, be able to, to calculate the effect sizes that we would need. Uh, so I think that'll be a very valuable uh, tool for future research. In, in virtually any sleep-related question.